Hey boys and girls, welcome again to uh, Monroe Live, and today we're going to be looking at a Winnebago. Now I know that's not a Tesla, but hey, we've got to we got to share it around. And this is the new ERV2. So uh, with us today we've got Kevin. You already know him. And then we've got Cornell, and we've got Brian. And uh, the four of us are going to have a look at this vehicle um, that uh, that they brought in uh, all the way from uh, Minnesota. So uh, we're pretty uh, pretty excited to have a look. Um, we don't get a chance to see too much of uh, uh, things other than uh, than cars and uh, and light trucks. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what they've got here. So why don't we uh, why don't we start off with uh, maybe a little bit of the statistics on this? Um, um, you know, one of the things that I'm kind of worried about is range. I don't want to you know jump right in and uh, spoil the effect and whatnot, but uh, but the range seems to be a little low, and um, I was wondering if maybe you could uh, tell us uh, a little bit. This, I think, is a Mercedes, right? This is a Ford Mercedes e Transit. Free. This is a Ford Transit? Yep, with ah. the high top. So let me let me a little backstory to this. So about okay. three years ago, Winnebago uh, Industries, our parent company, started to kind of enter the EV space. And our advanced technology group took a Ford e Transit, so yeah. a stock ICE vehicle, took out the internal combustion engine and the transmission and everything and replaced it with electric motors, electric transmission, electric everything. So we pioneered this about two years ago. We started that process and we yeah. launched it in 2022 in January. And so it was a drivable unit. We actually drove it from DC back to Minnesota over a course of a couple of days. And I think actually we we're supposed to see you guys at that point. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so that was a concept vehicle. That was our proof to the world that we can do this, that an electric vehicle in the RV space makes sense. And we start to, to really address those customer needs um, from a sustainability standpoint and then drive in intelligent technology. So that vehicle also had something called a central controller, which was the first um, IoT house uh, RV. And so it could control energy management, um, the battery that was for the chassis actually supported the house as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it was quite, quite revolutionary for what we were trying to do. Yeah. Um, in the last 12 months, the Winnebago team, so the brand under Winnebago Industries, said, let's take this and make it real. Um, let's go from concept to the production vehicle. So this right here is North America's first all-electric, zero-emissions electric RV. Um, it's on a Ford e-transit chassis. Um, so they're Gen 1 e-transit. So yeah. that, according to Ford, gets about 108 mile range. Um, obviously, it's impacted by weather. It's impacted by weight. It's impacted by um, um, just grade. a grade lot of things. Grade is yeah. a big thing, too. We're actually seeing 108 on average. We're actually seeing close to 120 on average. Um, obviously, temperature does impact it. Mm -hmm. So range yeah. is most certainly a concern to us. Yeah. The team, particularly Brian's team, and the broader Winnebago Industries organization is looking at alternative avenues uh, to, to support uh, range anxiety and range extension ultimately. Yeah, yeah. And so we're on a 4D e transit. That's why this is a prototype. Um, and so we as Winnebago and, and the RV industry work with various chassis providers. So your Fords, your Stellantis's, your Mercedes. And then we're looking at other avenues um, from a range extension standpoint. Mm. So this unit isn't simply an electric RV for us. For us, this is arguably the future of RVing. So there's a lot of innovation within this, not just from electrical architecture in the chassis standpoint, but electrical architecture in the house, um, sustainability, design aspects to this, and then connectivity. So there's well, a lot you, going on. You're missing this. a big one. Um, this one's solar panels, right? You got solar panels yes, down here. Yes, we can go and to the front. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. That. Yeah, sure. Let's have a peek let's, at that. Let's go here. I'm kind of interested in uh, anything that's solar to me is a uh, free electricity works. Yeah. So I'll hand it to Brian because he's he's our engineer. So yeah, let me let me just run through some of the exterior elements, design elements of the unit. Um, this particular unit, as you asked, has solar panels. What you see here are the three flexible solar panels. This is a proprietary uh, patent pending attachment strategy that we developed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the team worked very hard on being able to get to an aesthetic appearance that's really favorable. Uh, so you, you can look at that and see it's not just functional, but there's an aesthetic appearance uh, that's yeah. appealing. So from that regard, there's three panels you see here. There's another two panels on top of the unit. Uh, the fixed panels here deliver 500 watts of solar collection capability. 
Then we also, as standard equipment, would sell two uh, trifold blankets that get you another 400 watts. So uh -huh. total solar collection capability on this unit is 900 watts. Wow, that's uh, 900 watts is not so bad. Um, yeah, that's uh, so. What would that be? How how many miles do you think you might be able to get out of uh, like a day's worth of uh, solar? Well, one of the subtleties on the donor vehicles and the donor vehicles that we get from the chassis manufacturers are last yeah. mile delivery. Yeah. Um, created for the last mile delivery market. Yeah. So this particular unit, as Canal indicated, only offers 108 miles of range. Yeah. And that's um, how, how Ford measures the range during or with the EPA standard. So in that regard, are we able to get more than that? Sure. Um, you know, that's the standard that they, I'm sure you're more familiar with it than I am. On that regard, this particular unit has the high voltage chassis battery. They would not allow us to tap into that battery. So from an engineering oh. perspective, we had to add supplemental house batteries. So this has, in addition mm -hmm. to the chassis battery, 15 kilowatts. Of, 15 kilowatts. of house battery storage capability. Uh, these are proprietary lithionics ion blade batteries um, mm -hmm. that, that we developed with lithionics and it's uh, a, a pretty uh, non-invasive uh, package and we can show you that as we go through the inside of the vehicle. Well, that'd be great, I'd so like to see that. Five yeah. inches tall. Um, there's two of them in the back laid on the ground. Yeah. And so for the RV industry, it's quite unique. So you're typically finding batteries and ultimately you're taking up space. So this kind of yeah. innovation from us was keep it low, keep it low in terms of center of gravity, but then ensure it doesn't impede space, Yeah. given we're limited on space um, in a Class B camper van. Mm. So a, a couple subtleties on the exterior we can, we can just point out are taking a, a B van uh, from uh, a chassis manufacturer, right. like a transit, Trying to give it your own aesthetic appearance is a bit of a challenge. So mm -hmm. things like uh, modifying the grill to be able to uh, give it more of a, a Winnebago aesthetic appearance. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the things we work with Ford actually to make sure that we're not violating any of the airflow requirements for the HVAC system. So mm -hmm. we've computed obviously all of the airflow uh, that actually exceeds what Ford had originally engineered yeah. uh, and developed our own aesthetic appearance. Obviously the, uh, the solar panel on the top. As you walk around the side, you'll see- Well, while we're he still here, sure. um, are these vents functional or? Oh, they're just aesthetics, sorry. Yeah, they're... Oh, no, that, this one is. This one's got vent of some sort. Yeah, those are from Ford, Ford. as I, I'm- Oh, I'm, I see, so I you, he, you, you basically, uh, you get, you get stuck with a hood. Is there anything underneath this? No. Storage or anything? No, just... Uh, uh, that's where all your controls are? Yep. Yeah, so this is your electronics bay then? Um, no, that's not our electronics bay. This is all Ford's Ford. HVAC system, their electronics. Oh, I see. Uh, so there was nothing underneath the hood. I mean, we can pop the hood and show you, but it's all yeah. uh, stock chassis manufacturer. Well, we can probably run that in B-roll or something, and they, if sure. you want, we can show Sounds it. Sounds good. Yeah. Great. So well, from an uh, appearance perspective, uh, sure. we developed these side pods uh, with what we call the Magnus effect, as you see the dimpling that yeah. fades in and fades out. Uh, yeah. you, you can't see it very well with the wrap, but it's also duplicated on uh, the side cladding here. Uh -huh. As you walk see back, you can oh, yeah. see that yeah. dimpling. Yeah. Yeah. So again, trying to find ways to be able to make it our own sure. from an appearance perspective. Right. The greenhouse of the unit is the greenhouse of the yeah. unit. You can't change that. Um, this particular uh, port here, this is a J1772 hmm. uh, SAE um, uh, connection to be able to charge the house batteries. This yeah. is the first time this has ever been used in the auto industry, or excuse me, in the RV industry. I see. Um, and uh, we have a patent pending on this. Uh, huh. Very good. Now your standalone solar panels. Do they interface with this or no? The, plug? Stand, the, the solar panels uh, go through solar panel chargers and they charge the batteries, the house batteries directly. And Brian missed the biggest one, in my opinion, is the wrap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Canal, this was Canal's baby. <laughs> Let him tell you about the wrap. So yeah. because this is a prototype vehicle, there's 12 of these across the country right mm -hmm. now being tested and we'll go into what field testing looks like for us. 
um, we knew people would kind of start asking questions around what is this thing, sure. especially when it says ERV on it. Yeah. And so he said, why not go big and go bold? And so it kind of is a play on kind of the swirls and stuff that prototypes yeah. do. But we wanted to showcase kind of core locations across the country where where are consumers, these urban nomads want to go. Right. Um, and so obviously there's there's sites like Las Vegas, the Seattle Tower, St. Louis, Congress. And then across the board, there's a couple um, Easter eggs um, for our team members mm-hmm. in Forest City. So there's Forest City, Iowa up there. There's a couple Winnebago's that are going across. Um, and actually one of our sister companies that's under the Winnebago Industries umbrella is Chris Craft. So you'll see a, lot of, oh, a couple okay. boats um, yeah. on this. So it was really just to, to scream um, and, and showcase to the world all the activities that you do with RVing from ATVing to cityscapes that you can go look at. and. And obviously just kind of enjoy the great outdoors yeah. and enjoy the U.S. You're going to color it in as you hit all the stuff. So there is a plan. <laughs> I've been very, very conscious of coloring stuff, but there is a plan to take this and have a bunch of kids kind of color it yeah. in a bunch mm-hmm. of spots. So. My daughter would love it. So, yeah. So one uh, subtlety, if I could show you up yeah. here. <clears throat> as I mentioned, you've got a chassis battery and a house battery. I showed you the house battery right. port. The chassis battery port uh, is very similar to uh, the production 4D transit. Yeah, um, let's just maybe pop that so people can see the connection. So, so the team obviously has confirmed that this will operate at a normal campground. You could take it to an RV campground. Yeah. Uh, you could plug it, plug it into a 50 amp and you could charge your chassis battery in addition to your house battery. Mm-hmm. The 30 amp charge uh, port on a, uh, on a campground plug-in will not work with this, but a 110 will. Okay. So you mm. can do level two charge <clears throat> or DC fast charge. You can do 50 amp level two and you can do 110 volt uh, charging to be mm. able to charge your, your chassis battery on um, yeah go ahead i just uh, on the house battery on the side of the unit um you can do 50 amp uh 30 amp uh as well as 110 amp so right. you can't do a dc fast charger on that particular port um but it it you can charge the house batteries uh in as little as four hours time okay um although the chassis battery with a level two charger is similar to the ford yeah uh that that takes a I don't know, 40 minutes, 38 minutes, I believe. Mm-hmm. So this is your standard uh, double door. Uh, so so what... the, the restroom is in the back of the other one, the, the gas uh, or diesel powered one. This is the, this is the restroom and, um, and shower. So you got it further up then? Or yeah, something? actually this one's got a med cabin uh, rest ah. area, restroom. Um, okay. But back here, what our customers typically like uh, are to be able to shower off if they go for a run or they go yeah, for a bike yeah. and obviously they get all sweaty so you've you've got a water center here um to be able to you can hook up a, a hose with a shower on it um it's actually uh, we supply that with the unit it's in the other mm. compartment over there you've got your typical water fill you've got your fresh water inlet yeah so at a campground you typically hook up you right. know city water, city water to it and right. it just charges the system although you can fill a tank this has a best in class 30 gallons uh, of water capability. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we, we obviously listen to our customers and make sure that we engineer the product to their needs. Uh, well, I can see one need that you've come. This looks like, to me, is this the dog kennel? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, So you'd be you surprised go. people do use it for that. Well, I can't imagine why they wouldn't. Seven. I mean, it's funny, 70% of our RV customers have dogs. Yeah, and well, so 70% of the... Easily I think the, could be a dog kennel. Yeah, or a bad child. Oh, <laughs> we should do that. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, on the other side here, you have storage. Um, here's the hose I was referring to with the shower. Yeah. Uh, had. Um, the, the two, we... Uh, supply this with two charge cords uh, oh, so yeah. you could charge your chassis battery and your house battery uh, in parallel. Mm-hmm. Managing cargo is a big deal for customers right. and making sure that obviously uh, in uh, driving situations it's safe. So we've got a very robust gate there that we uh, we measure to uh, hold up to 150 pounds of force going forward. Hmm. Um, so it doesn't sound like a lot, but when you load in things in oh, here, gets, you want to make sure yeah, that when yeah, you slam on the brakes, things are not yeah. going to go forward. So, yeah. 
um, we have we have standards. Kevin, obviously, you're going to ask the question. Oh, I, you can continue. Yeah, okay. yeah. I obviously, do, back here we've got uh, a curtain that comes down with a screen. Uh, so okay, that when you're camping and you want, uh, if you're sleeping and you want to sleep with your doors open, you can do that to manage uh, bug infiltration. Yeah. Um, these here are covers for your side window and your front windshield. Mm -hmm. um, not only for thermal, uh, but obviously for privacy. Mm -hmm. so. Very good. Are these done in-house? Are these essentially from Ford and then skinned per... Uh... No, we actually work with a supplier um, to be able to create uh, these the yeah. Yeah. here. What are some, like with the, with the cabinets? I've watched, you know, I've described to a bunch of like overlanding, van builds, stuff like that. And I watch it and, you know, a lot of people build like very traditional style cabinets, sometimes straight from like Home Depot when they're upfitting vans. And just always in the back of my mind is just like, I'm thinking MVH and durability. You know, obviously this is, it's not a house. You know, it's, it's, it's a very dynamic environment. And mm -hmm. what are some of the, like, I know you have revised your cabinets and things of that nature, but like what are yeah. the challenges of trying to essentially build a house with A couple things. Obviously the studio team, uh, they want to create an environment uh, that, that is appealing. Yeah. So understanding the customer and making sure that they design the aesthetics to be able to fit that customer. So what they chose is an appearance called Japandi, which right. is a cross between Japanese styling uh, in Scandinavian styling, okay. um, and and that's the look they went to. So you can see this bamboo type finish, right. uh, and obviously you've got subtle colors, uh, light tones. Um, we are in a very enclosed area, sure. so obviously making it seem bigger than it mm -hmm. is and not yeah. claustrophobic was an important uh, aesthetic goal. And then making sure that everything is clean and purposeful. Right. Um, now then you walk into things, uh, these particular cabinets, uh, we partnered with a company in Germany called Voringer, um, and the lightweight material, it's got a substrate that's ultra lightweight, it's called Wundertech, uh, and um, managing that to be able to get to sure. an, a, a weight that, uh, uh, that, that, managing weight is one of the big things for range. Obviously, right. the more weight you have, the less range you're going to get out of the unit yeah. with an yeah. electric unit. An interesting uh, fact about this unit is it actually has four voltage systems. You've got the 240 volts uh, with a 50 amp charge that yeah. goes into it. Uh, then it steps it down. Um, you've got a 48 volt system that operates uh, uh, appliances like the air conditioner. Then you've got a 110 volt system for your typical um, 110 plugs. Uh, and then you've got a 12 volt system for other uh, yeah. uh, appliances uh, in the unit. Hmm. How much complexity do you think you could get out if you were able to get access to the, the traction battery? Well, um, uh, there's there's a lot of electronics in here, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you could you could you could eliminate uh, probably mm -hmm. a good five of the modules, yeah. um, which yeah. is quite a bit of weight, that would quite drop. a bit of complexity <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Actually, with uh, <laughs> with Elon Musk making his uh, announcement of 48 volts. Uh, <laughs> it should drive the yeah, industry. Yeah, it too. should. Uh, yeah, yeah, the whole Move thing. Move a little quicker. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but still, that's one thing that they're going to they're going to create their own sensors and switches and everything, because there's virtually nothing in the marketplace. But once they do it, everybody will scramble we'll just like castings. Nobody was doing it. Now everybody's doing it. Yeah. yeah. So um, just a couple subtleties between our planning team and our engineering team, you you have to resolve simple issues. Sure. So let's just say hypothetically the vehicle is parked at an angle. So being able to have a flat surface, obviously you need an adjustment yeah, uh, to be right. able to get the table at uh, yeah. the, a, a level to the world uh, mm -hmm. position to be able to use it properly. So um, resolving simple engineering issues like that mm, uh, yeah. are, are the type of detail that we go down to. Fit and finish on this type of execution here, um, we, we tried to get a very clean look that has harmony yeah. with all of the colors. Um, so it's a flush table. Um, we can obviously try and get better at, at having an invisible hinge here, mm -hmm. but having color schemes that complement one yeah. another. Hidden fasteners, there's no fasteners you see. Our yeah. president 
challenge the team that he didn't want to see any fasteners or yeah. if you did have a fastener he wanted to understand what the purpose of it was and why mm -hmm. we couldn't eliminate it so yeah. uh, Hugh Bauer our president was very influential on trying to make sure that we stretched ourselves sure. and uh, as the other ice unit we brought you looked at that you could see visible fasteners yeah. so yeah. trying to upper game a bit is uh, is one of the elements. So Sandy, why don't you step inside? But before yeah. I do that, as I pointed out in that uh, ice unit that we brought, you'll notice certain areas where you have fasteners on that unit where this and one is very one clean and yeah. finished. Yeah. Actually, I was just going to point that out. Um, the other one has screws everywhere. This this just looks like it's made to be, as opposed to, you know, grab a bunch of screws and start firing them into the floor. Yeah, I like everything here about the the cleanness. I didn't understand the, you know, Japanese versus uh, Scandinavian, but in Scandinavian furniture, they use bow ties and there's a lot of visible stuff that mm, some people like myself don't really care for. I like the clean looks yeah. where you, you actually, I wouldn't change this simply because people need to know where is this going to go if I try and flip it. So I would, and, and you've got one over there as well, but, but for the most part, everything here is just, I just, I like things that, you know, magnets hold us in place and stuff. I like things like that. It, it really, uh, it really means that you've thought about it and it's not just haphazard. Let me jump in here, make sure I don't have anything on my feet. <laughs> <laughs> Can these be so washed I out? So I assume this is yes. your yep. refrigerator, correct? It is. Yeah. You can open it. So that's the flooring, Kevin, to your answer, yeah. is Chilowich. It's the bottom of so it is all uh, bio, me, uh, so it's all recycled. Let around here so you can and see And then it. I would compare it to ah. marine, Okay. you can just kind of hose it off. And then up here, what do we have? So it extends the countertop, so if I you see. want more countertop space, and then that countertop lifts off, and the induction cooktop is underneath it. So this somehow moves. How how do we do that? Oh, yeah. How about and that. Then there's an induction cooktop. You can plug yeah. it in just as it sits there, or you can bring it outside to your outdoor table. So it just lifts out. Yep, yep. it does. Yeah, very good. Anyway, just have a look at this instrument panel now. <laughs> anybody that's been listening to me talking lately about how I like clean design. Um, this is pretty clean as far as I can tell. There's a lot more buttons and switches over here on the other side, but it's not really overdone like what we've seen in a couple of the European cars lately. So this is kind of a, a, a very nice. I, I really like this. I also like this. I love this uh, leather here. Um, so part of our design skin. was to change the obviously the seats so mm -hmm. that design is ours um, yeah. a lot of materials in here are also recyclable as well um outside sort of that there wasn't much change to the front cabin uh, mm. we added some styling components well i'll tell you kept uh, it everything here looks really quite nice uh the fit and finish is uh, far superior to what i saw in the uh, ice vehicle i love this this is a great idea Having um, having a little screen here for uh, ventilation and keeping the bugs out at the same time. Oh, I love that too. Huh. Having a seat switch around that's that's uh, great. Both the seats will turn around. Yeah. Oop. So you oh, kind of have a workstation. I got my work base. Yeah. Um, so we call this the tech center. Oh, um, very good. Nice and simple. Also. You can use this for food if you're single camping. So this morning when I was charging this guy, I quickly stopped and got 45 minutes worth of work in right here. Um, nice and simple and easy. Um, obviously, I've got all the phone all charging the accoutrements here. So you've got, um, you've got a, I assume, a light, um, and then you've got 110, and you've got looks like uh, connections for uh, your cell phone and whatnot. You got yeah. it all right here, right now. All right, so the bathroom is next. Yeah. So all of these are anchored so yeah, that when you're driving, yeah. there's no movement. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is very reminiscent. Of, we we uh, also work on aircraft, so um, a lot of the aircraft uh, uh, 
kinds of things like the overhead compartments and whatnot, and uh, and the push push uh, controllers. Control. They yep. they're all used uh, extensively in the aircraft industry. So full shower. Yeah. Um, this is a toilet that can come right out. Ah. Pop that panel in. Ah, so you don't have to wipe the toilet off. Oh, very good you idea. You got a full shower. <laughs> yeah. Cool. That so there's great. obviously in a B van, there's compromises you have to make to be able to. Uh, now, ideally, you wouldn't want to remove the toilet, although in this instance, it's much easier. And you pointed out a lot of what our customers go through where, hey, I don't want to wipe off the toilet when I take a shower, but I want yeah. the space to be able to stand in there. So having the toilet so that it's removable is, is yeah. pretty key. Oh, that's, a, that's a cool idea. Actually, I think that this is so, um, you know, comfortable, I guess would be the only word I can think of. Um, and by the way, I just want to let you know, it's not me that's making the mud on the floor. I it's think Cornell. it's my shoes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. He's, he's got the fancy I'm going to have to clean this up anyway. Yeah, so. exactly. So uh, the, this kind of looks like this turns into a bed then? Yeah. Yes. And there's a full side bed. Wow. Come lay down, Sandy. Uh, <laughs> I got boots on, and uh, I don't think that'd be. I think this will fit uh, Grace a whole lot better than me. I think. Yeah. So we've actually, uh, uh, as you see the soft walls here behind these walls, we have several layers of insulation. We did go with a 3M product, Thinsulate, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and then you'll notice uh, these thermal. Uh, screens here in a sense. Um, so you unzip those and obviously there's a screen you can unzip the screen and open the window to get you know a pass through if you if you yeah. so choose to but but these really keep the uh, the heat inside uh, so trying to manage uh, heat. You'll notice <clears throat> the the sight lines across the ceiling um, obviously the headliners uh, are much larger than in the auto industry uh, so managing them in a fashion that they're, we minimize the seams and where we do have seams, we control them, mm -hmm. uh, trying to get to a fit and finish standard that's higher than, than what we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. Making sure that there's color harmony front to back uh, so that everybody, er, all of the commodities are uh, uh, common in color and uh, they kind of go invisible, so you you don't feel that claustrophobic. Or if this were black, so to speak, it would feel like it was coming down on you. So trying yeah. to yeah. keep everything with common uh, colors uh, is is very important to us. So we mentioned the house batteries earlier. I'm standing on top of them right now, oh. <laughs> um, which still, from a design standpoint, I'm six feet tall, and so I can stand fully, um, mm -hmm. which which just allows that space. Mm -hmm. um, and we can fit on this bed, even though it looks smaller than I'd say people think. <laughs> well, that night I had to take my shoes off. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but <clears throat> this design is unique. So the floor plan in the RV industry is always important, making yeah. sure that you meet those customer needs. So you have multiple areas for seating, um, at least a couple areas for sleeping. And then when this is kind of pushed away, this is a nice dining table because the table that's right under here pops right into place. And you have a nice spot just to eat and kind of wow. engage. And with with the RV industry, it's all about kind of being outdoors and being connected, but then also engaging one another. So you have that ability to really connect and, and you can fit four people in here um, when you're doing that. So right now we're going to talk about a little bit about the infotainment system. Uh, I guess really the, the, the entire system, um, yeah, right. electrical architecture of the vehicle itself, yeah. um, at least from Winnebago's perspective. And I'm with John. Chris. 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 Sorry. No, Close. I'm here with Chris. So yeah. I mean, he's going to walk us through a little bit about it. So yeah. um, if you want to step in. We'll yeah, go absolutely. Right so uh, what you see in here is our, uh, our proprietary uh, brand new Winnebago Connect system. So what this means is this is a brand new system for Winnebago. Um, you obviously have the control panel in the coach, but right. it's part of a broader ecosystem that yeah. we're creating around how people engage with their RV and with their vehicle. So the way that we like to think about this is kind of the smart home and the smart sure. vehicle coming together. And we're looking at how do we provide the best experience for people to do that. Right. So 
how do they control everything in their RV? How do they monitor the levels of their tanks and their right. water? How do they, um, you know, manage things like the lights and simple things that people do on a day to day basis? Right. Um, you know, but also how does that connect into the driving experience as well so that we can provide that holistic uh, customer experience for them no matter where they are. And ultimately our, our goal is we want to reduce the management and control of the RV. So sure. we want to, we want people to be out in the outdoors. We don't want them fussing around right. with controlling their RV and figuring out where their tank levels are. So one of our metrics is, is how do we reduce engagement with sure. the screens so okay. that people can get out and they can do what's important to them. Right. So, and I see here it's Bluetooth enabled with the phone. It is. So we've got a mobile app as well, our companion mobile app that allows all of the functionality um, that you see here, but uh, anywhere. So okay. you can control your um, climate control, your air conditioner, your uh, heater, as well as monitor your different levels. So right. if you're out hiking um, and it's a really hot day, and you're coming back, if you want to t turn on the air conditioner before you get back, you can do that from your mobile app. And so the the vehicle is also connected cellular, not just Bluetooth? Yep, so, yep. Okay. so it is full, a fully connected system um, like you'd find in most newer RVs sure. today, but this is brand new for the industry as well um, that Winnebago is bringing and creating kind of that proprietary experience so that we can help uh, like I said, reduce the sure. way that, um, reduce the management of the RV right. and reduce how complex they are today. Because like I said, you're, you're dealing with a, a house right. and you're dealing with a vehicle. So reducing that complexity is, is really important to us. Yeah, I and mean, we, we were talking a little bit earlier about essentially the, you know, the fact that the vehicle has its own house battery because we can't tap into the, the traction battery of the right. vehicle right. itself. Yeah. And then the complexity being theoretically in the future, if we if that could happen, being reduced within the vehicle itself. But then, you know, within this particular system itself being integrated, how much, I mean, I would say, I don't know if the other vehicle has more of a legacy system, but like how much complexity was reduced, would you say, with this particular it's, unit? It's immense. So what you'd see in a traditional vehicle today is what we call a multiplex system. Mm -hmm. So... It started out with, um, you know, you'd have a, a wall of all the different controls up here right. of lights, of uh, your water systems, your heater and air conditioner. And then um, that kind of moved into more of a centralized control panel. Mm -hmm. And then what we're doing here is taking that a step further and creating uh, an experience around that, a connected experience around sure. that so that it makes it easy to do those things. It's not just about how do I turn this thing on and off, but how do I make it so that, for example, with energy systems, you can see the how the power is coming into the vehicle. You can see the state of charge, but you can also see how that's being used and what different systems right. are using that so you can conserve energy uh, in the best way. When you're looking for essentially draw on the system, mm -hmm. um, that, will it, is it mostly just a zone? Like if we had like essentially a couple of laptops, a phone and various devices, because there's, you know, Sandy mentioned this plugs all throughout the vehicle. Mm -hmm. Is it um, essentially just for the cabin side or how, how much uh, granularity can you get with respect to where user draws are coming from with the yeah. system? So at this point, um, you'll be able to see the power coming into the system yep. and where that's coming from, whether that's solar power, shore power, or if you're... Uh, getting um, from the Ford chassis via pro power, right. you'll be able to see that. And then you'll be able to see the usage, like you said, kind of on a zone level. So you'll okay. be able to see if you're, if you're using outlets, sure. you'll be able to see if you're using um, the water heater, for example. Gotcha. Um, and it's, it's pretty granular. So if you were to dive into that, you would be able to see, um, you know, past history of right. usage. So you can, uh, better understand how you're using the system yeah. and manage that appropriately okay. because that's uh, that's one of the things that we found from talking with customers and understanding is, is you know, if they're out boondocking for seven days, sure. they're really paying attention to yeah. all of the details of their usage. And it's critical for, for especially an ERV yep. and managing that, that uh, battery and that energy um, as a combined unit. Right. So, it's, it's no longer just how do I manage the battery inside of my sure. uh, house, but how do I manage the whole system together right. so that you can ultimately 
you know, stay comfortable in your vehicle, but then drive away right, yeah, when yeah. you're done. <laughs> With more people getting into this market and stuff like that, what is that, uh, you know, do you anticipate more volume and maybe how can that help you, you know, move things forward as far as changing, not necessarily changing electrical architecture, like I think this is a big leap going yeah. forward, but uh, just moving things forward that make it essentially, at least from our perspective, you know, more efficient and, um, and then hopefully maybe even drive costs down further as volume increases. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, um, that's a really good question. And we've obviously seen that with the pandemic with yeah. a lot of new first time buyers coming in. And um, we're using that from a technology standpoint um, to really inform like, how do we make this as easy as possible? Like I talked sure. about, but also from an efficiency standpoint from the organization, um, that is one of the reasons that we wanted to create this proprietary system so that um, we can help build better efficiency in how we, we manage the digital uh, technology mm -hmm. in the coach and tie that into the rest of our products. Okay. So, well, in today's world, you know, or the vehicle you might see over there, um, there's a lot of physical controls sure. and there are some multiplex systems that might be on a wall. Um, the connectivity in the future of this screen or the mobile app to the different components is that, for lack of a better word, connectivity sure. of all those systems is really critical to getting this right. right. So we've done a lot of work just as an organization um, transforming to be more technology forward so that we can we can enhance that experience mm -hmm. and drive down costs for us ourselves. Is this the uh, only interface for it or can it be used essentially on the sync? So right uh, now, um, well. yeah, we've we've got just the interface back okay. here as well as the mobile app that allows you to, to manage and control things. Um, well, the interface in the front is um, the Ford E-Transit. Okay. Um, I believe it's a Ford Sync system. Yep. Okay. Yeah. But we are looking at opportunities with Ford and, you know, how can we connect yeah. those experiences yeah, together. Get a menu. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yep. Okay. I mean, is there anything else you wanted to mention about it or...? Uh, one of the things that I'll mention is um, you asked about the Ford system in there, and uh, we've talked about the, the range anxiety problem sure. is very real. So this is why um, we're looking at opportunities with the digital systems that we're creating to help reduce that. And okay. Technology plays a key role in that and how we help customers understand, you know, how do I get to the next charger? Sure. Um, and, and working alongside Ford to, to help figure that out. That's a big big thing that we're looking into um, to ultimately reduce that anxiety that people might have and help them get to the, the next campsite sure. or get to the next charging station. Hey boys and girls, thanks for watching. I'd like to really thank all the guys here from Winnebago for letting us have a look at their marvelous new uh, vehicle. Um, we're gonna have a little bit more, I guess a little later, but for right now, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more on Winnebago and, uh, and Monroe Live. Thank you.